I'm gonna go out and do some real time action for you today. I went out shopping for refrigerators on the way home. I did some diving. Nice little uh, leather coat of some sorts. It's really not sellable. Uh, but it's curve worthy for sure. Still nice looking. It's got a good look to it. Uh, it's kind of beat up, I guess. Anyways, I'll give it a chance, I suppose. Nice little brass. Uh, not sure what the hey, oh, that's a bathroom tissue holder. I didn't even realize what that was till just now. That's all brass though. It's nice. Scrap that. Uh, I'm gonna keep this brand new little shelf bracket. It's exactly like the ones I use for my catwalks. And uh, some scrap metal. It's not a bad little lamp, really. It's an LED. It's kind of busted up. But uh, it's got a good wheel sticker on it, as does some of this other stuff. I thought that was kind of funny. <laughs> All right, good wheel stuff. That's uh, on its third life now, at least. Third owner, anyway. Uh, not a bad little coat rack. Or whatever that is. Let me go like that. I think it's a coat rack, hat rack, something or other. Not too bad. A little lamp. I'll just scrap that. I didn't realize it was broken. I found this make a lamp kit and I started finding these lamps and stuff. <laughs> Got a project going and so I'll hang on to this and what I'll do with this is in six months when I don't make a project out of it I'll take it to the scrapyard. <laughs> hey, that's got a good wheel sticker too. I didn't see that one. $2.52. So someone bought that at a store for such amount of money. Never used it. Donated it to the Goodwill who sold it to someone else who never used it. And threw it in the garbage. <laughs> That's uh, dated 1995. So that's 23 years old. So I'll hang on to that because I want it and I'll use it until six months from now i'll decide then i do to uh take it to the scrapyard <laughs> just like the previous at least two people before me that's kind of nice right there i thought that was a handmade deal it's got a made in china sticker and i've never seen a sticker here it says this product made with safe paint we care and it's got little green leaves on there I've never seen that sticker because you heard the stories about how they send us stuff with leaded paint and whatnot. And actually, that doesn't even have paint, I don't think. I thought it was just a piece of metal that had a grinder to it. That's why I liked it. I, don't know, I might hang on to that one. I don't know. I thought that was kind of neat. I think that came from the Goodwill as well. having something like that around when I was a little kid it really it really reminds me of something oh it's a little music box that's what it is yeah I remember seeing one of these when I was a little kid somewhere somebody had one of those hey it's working what do you think that's not bad Napkin holder. I'll uh, tell myself I'll use that. Now I'll take that to the scrapyard in a few months. And I gotta uh, change the oil gear oil on my scooter. I've been putting that off. Little bits of copper. This was kind of a cool little lamp. It's like a candle. Made it look like a fake candle. That's probably kind of neat. 
It's got a Goodwill sticker as well. And uh, these Goodwill stickers, I mean, why would you do that? Why, why would you put a, a price tag like that on something? You just slap it onto the, you know, they gotta pick the sticker off, you know? Not everyone's got a can of sticker gunk remover at home, you know? It's, I mean, what a terrible way to put prices on stuff, you know? Why would, why would you do that? Anyways, and uh, just the standard copper wires. Found an old printer, scored a couple little ink tanks to go in my eBay lot. It's like a pair of hair cutting scissors. Okay, let's get to the dumpster diving. Well, I was gonna make a real-time video, but this is my second area I've come through and it's coming up pretty light. I think the truck came to the first place this morning, so Mondays can be a good day to do this. Uh, problem is it's intermittent, like the truck didn't come here, obviously, but down the street it might have hit there, so Tuesdays seem to be the worst day for doing what I'm doing where I live anyways that's actually a really nice rug this brand new carpet there literally that comes in handy for me with my cats and that's something my dog would like to lay on you know and I can just trash it. It's just disposable for me, you know, and just throw it away. What do you think, Fitz? <laughs> you like it? You like it? Huh? You like it? It belongs to you, huh? It belongs to that guy right there. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing to it? <laughs> no, it's okay. You like that thing? That's yours. It doesn't belong to Vitz. That belongs to you. Look at me, dog. <laughs> this rug, actually, I'm kind of under the impression that that is brand new. Let's see if I'm right or not. No, that's not brand new. Never mind. That little scrap there is nice though. Um, what I'm gonna have to do though is I live this way. I'm heading out this way and this area. So these are stainless steel, whatever you call them, off pickup truck. Step step bar or stepping bar or whatever you call those runner bars or whatever and this one actually is in really nice shape that shoot that thing would clean up to look almost brand new oh, not the rubbers cracked a little bit looks like they scraped something and dented this one those are about the nicest ones of these I've ever found usually they're all rusted out or something um it is a stainless steel so it shouldn't really rust unless it's low quality stainless steel but uh either way whatever the deal is i'm going to come back before i go home and i'll strap those on and take them i, I just can't carry them around with me so uh I'll just leave this here. That's all I found so far. I've been out for about 20 minutes. A little bit of number one insulated. So skibble skibble.
Do we have any uh, fantasy football fans out there or fantasy sports players? I don't know if you're familiar with uh, survival fantasy football. That's where you pick a team every week from the start of the season and you get eliminated as soon as you go up one pick wrong. And uh, over on Yahoo website, um, they've got a big one and we're in week 12 now. Check this out. Yahoo Survival Football. There's only 847 people left. But now it's getting real interesting. This is for $10,000. It's a free contest. It was free to enter. The funny thing about this is week one over here, Green Bay. I took Green Bay. Chicago was just trampling them into the ground. Uh, just, just beating them bad. Aaron Rodgers got hurt. Hurt his knee real bad, went in the locker room. Uh, he came back out in the second half and hopped around on one leg like some sort of Hall of Famer or something and made some kind of amazing comeback. It was hard to believe. And so I should have been done in week one. I kind of got lucky. Week 11, Pittsburgh, same deal as week one. They were down 16-0. to zero. They scored two touchdowns in the last two and a half minutes of the game. I was just, just super lucky. So I'm fortunate to still be in this thing. Week 12 picks, I'm taking Baltimore over Oakland. The rules of the survival contest are once you pick a team, you can no longer pick them for the rest of the year. It hasn't updated for this week yet. So you can just see you're in real light gray. These circles next to teams I've already taken, I cannot take them again. Baltimore over Oakland looks really good. Uh, Indianapolis over Miami is probably pretty safe, but I've looked into the next two weeks and I'm taking Baltimore for a reason because I'm saving those other teams. After week 12, in week 13 through week 17, you have to start taking two teams and they both have to win. So I've looked into the schedule to week 14 and I have a pretty clear road into week 15 if everything works out right. And just getting down to the nitty-gritty. I thought you might enjoy watching this. Anyways, bottom line, I'm taking Baltimore, week 12 over Oakland. Let me know what you think. Maybe you watch the games. Make a comment next week, see how I did. Coming into week 11 here, there was a little over 2,000 people still left. So 60% uh, of the field got eliminated this week. I didn't really start paying attention. I didn't note how many people originally entered, and I can't find those details. But this is Yahoo, a free contest. So I imagine it had to probably be well over 100,000 people. I really didn't start paying attention myself until about week six and seven. I was just kind of just goofing around before that. But uh, it's definitely interesting now. I imagine if there's a tie – However, this works out. If there's a tie, the winners will split the ten thousand um, dollars. I can't imagine a whole lot of people making it in the week sixteen and seventeen, considering uh, twelve hundred people got eliminated last week. Well, that was pretty cool. Somebody might get a real kick out of that. There we go. Nice little motor. Nice little dusty motor. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Cease. Okay. Trash picking action. Curbside trash picking. Pitch, if I could talk. Picking action. <laughs> Curbside pitching, pitching, pitch, pitch, pitch. Hey, look at that. That's all right.
Nice little bits of aluminum. Uh, let's see her down with here. So I'm gonna go scrap. for that actually oh that's aluminum as well just whatever the scale operator wants to do I suppose that's not good it's just a steel wheel, so I'll leave that alone. <sighs> These are the little thingamajiggies off of a satellite dishes. What all this stuff is related to here. Some sort of TV network. That looks like one of those locking bars for your steering wheel, if I'm not mistaken. I saw a show once showing how professional thieves when they see these in cars. <laughs> There's a total joke to them. I can't remember what they did exactly, but. That was just wham, 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 flam, done. Check this out. Someone was in the satellite TV business. Nice little chunks right there. So inside of here, inside this plastic case, is a big chunk of aluminum. Let's see. I don't want to make a mess out here. <laughs> there it is. Some yards might give you clean for that. Other ones might give you breakage. Just depends. That's a great deal of aluminum on there. Every bit of that's aluminum. You could probably clean it up if you really wanted to, but let's see what they want to do with it. I don't want to bust all these up in the street, so I'll take all these to my clean them up somewhere else, anyways. Unless it's just gonna fall apart. <laughs> Nice little chunks. These could be sellable on eBay. Uh, I just have no way of testing stuff out. Something like that. So, I could sell for parts to repair, but. Uh, in a big lot, maybe there might be demand for it. But I'll just as soon scrap them and be done with them. That's one thing about scrapping that's not really. Uh, people really don't think about a whole lot is maybe I could make 20 or 30 dollars profit when all said and done if I put an hour's labor into selling these on eBay maybe two hours labor when all said and done selling them somewhere but see I just put in uh, I don't know what was it 60 seconds labor well, I'll have to uh, put in another few minutes taking that plastic off, but just a matter of minutes. And I'm gonna make a couple dollars, you know? So, 
what's uh, two dollars in two minutes that's sixty dollars an hour you know as opposed to making twenty or thirty dollars putting two hours labor into it you're talking about ten fifteen dollars an hour you know and, and I, those numbers aren't exactly right in a specific situation but it's that frame of mind uh when it comes to scrapping stuff that uh, people aren't real experienced in in scrapping large amounts of stuff it just doesn't occur to them that you know i just made two dollars in two minutes that's sixty dollars an hour you know it's that that frame of mind that people just don't kind of understand you know they're like oh you just scrapped you know that, that was a good actually that was a good example you know Oh, you could sell this for $30 on eBay. Well, that's an hour's labor, $30. Or $2 in two minutes, that's $60 an hour. So, I think you get my point. I mean, I, I can't say either way is better than the other, or right or wrong, or you're right, and this person's wrong, or whatever. I'm just saying that you just have to uh, put that little gem of knowledge <laughs> into your mental toolbox when it comes to scrapping, you know. So it doesn't take very long to get that plastic off there. I, I would bust them up if I wasn't on someone else's property and be done with it real quick. But, you know, just an example. I gave that example for a microwave before, you know. You could sell a, mic a working microwave, put an hour's two hour or two labor into it, and sell it for ten or fifteen bucks, you know, one way or the other. Or you could just grab it and throw it in the back of your truck and do your scrap load, and it takes a minute, and you make. Uh, so you make two dollars off selling that microwave to the scrapyard. You know, two dollars in a minute is one hundred and twenty dollars an hour. Your average in scrapping that kind of stuff, as opposed to selling it for fifteen dollars, where you put an hours labor into it, you're making fifteen dollars an hour. And people think, oh, you can make fifteen dollars on that. You, you sold it for two. Well, wait a second. Don't forget about time. Time is the unsung, the unsung factor. Every situation is a little different, but you gotta think along them lines when you're scrapping, you know.
faster than I thought. That's that stuff too much. Sheesh. Uh, looks like somebody's blueprints or something. So, uh, one for a Casey store. Duluth Trading Company. Uh, Northwest Arkansas Nature and Education Center. That's a big one. That's probably pretty interesting stuff. I probably shouldn't be looking at it though. That's for uh, uh, I don't know if that's for that or not, uh, like out of an attic or something. That would be like a folding ladder for an attic or something. That doesn't really look strong enough to stand on, though. Um, huh. Thinking how I can use that for my cats. I could uh, slap some carpet on it and make a cat scratcher out of that. Fasten it to the wall. I would, if the steps were wider, where the cats could get up and sit on it. I would do that with that because that's actually pretty nice. Uh, I just don't have a way to use it or whatever. So set it up here, so I might want to see that. Anybody out there knows exactly what that's for. It's got some interesting mount holes on it. Uh, mount brackets. Let us know in the comments. It looks nice, but it's just a bunch of tin. There's probably not even a dollar's worth of metal in there. Five cents a pound. There might be 20 pounds of sheet metal in there. People often ask me in the comments why I pass that stuff up. And other times I'll take just a little piece of metal, you know. That's situational. <laughs> if you missed my video where I talked about situational deals. It was just a situation where I could take all the metal out of that dumpster back there and make a dollar. But it would take a long time to wrestle with it. And mess around and it would fill me completely up and I'd have to go home and take a special trip all for a dollar you know so it's situational just depends on the situation I'm running out of daylight so I know I didn't find a whole lot of stuff I need to go back and get those 
runner bars, whatever you call them. One of those uh, Mexican produce crates. People like to have those. It's not really anything I can do with it, but uh, I'll set it on the curb. Someone will snatch that up right away. That's a nice thick one too. Sometimes they're made out of little thin pieces of wood. That one's pretty nice. What are we dealing with here? Uh-oh, the funk. <laughs> I have my limits. And that's it right there. Oh, yuck. I will set it right here and let it drain, though. Maybe somebody else will come along and want to mess with it. Sheesh. Whew. Get out of here. These little crates here, you can get five bucks all day long for that at like a flea market garage sale. Definitely too long to strap this way, but ah, it's pushing the limits. I think I can do that. Let's see. Yeah, that'll work nice. Take as many side streets as I can. I didn't find a whole lot of stuff, but I hope you enjoyed riding along with me. Hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, Thanks for watching. I was pushing this cart thinking it's abnormally smooth and straight and then I looked at this down here <laughs> and one of the wheels is busted in half not even touching the ground <laughs>